Hi, my name is Meredith and welcome to the first episode of my mental health and illness documentary series. This episode is going to focus on anxiety. Why did I put two thumbs up? <laughs> So for the basic structure of this episode, I'll be going through the definition of anxiety, what it means, and then with primary sources, um, explain what it's like to experience anxiety. Um, I will be included in the primary sources because this is one of the illnesses that I do suffer from. And then I'm gonna wrap up the episode with secondary sources and how you can help those with anxiety. So the definition of anxiety is a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behavior and or panic attacks. And then there's um, a different one because when you like first search it up on Google, there's like a couple different um, definitions of the word. So the other definition is a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. That pretty much encompasses anxiety in a very straightforward way. However, it doesn't give you the ability to actually experience what this is like. So anxiety to me means, I don't know, this like physical, mental, and emotional like, a, like crippling feeling almost, right? Like something that holds you back from being able to either just like be content and be in the moment or, you know, when it can be really bad to be able to like complete things that you want to be able to do, right? It's something that inhibits you from being the form of you that you want to be. I think of it as basically a giant knot in your stomach and it constantly just impacts your whole body, especially your brain. For me, it's usually just like a general sense of like not feeling well for a while, like being really worried or just tense or stressed like to a very high extent. Um, happens quite frequently. <laughs> Um, for real? I don't know. <laughs> I was diagnosed, I guess, technically when I was nine. Yeah, nine. My whole life. But I like, I've been, I was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder freshman year, like officially diagnosed, but it's always like been there. It started becoming a problem maybe in like sixth, seventh grade. I think I've started noticing it only during high school. Before that, I never really noticed it. It got a lot worse after sophomore year though. I officially basically got diagnosed with it back in like eighth grade, but I definitely had it way before then. It just was more subtle. Uh, my entire life. <laughs> well, I've always been super shy from when I was a child, but I feel like in middle school, it turned from like just being shy to being like scared of social interaction. I mean, I have always considered myself to be a nervous, <laughs> anxious person. I think I probably really started noticing like real effects of anxiety like when I was in college, probably like college and on, which was a while ago, despite what my sweatshirt says. <laughs> so with this illness, it has been with me for probably my entire life. I mean, it's one of those things where like, now that I'm looking at it, I am aware that it's been with me for my entire life, but I didn't notice it until probably the eighth grade or around like freshman year as well. Eighth grade to freshman year, that was a time. A lot of things were happening there, but um, that's when I really started to notice it. Um, I wouldn't say that like I've had it since the eighth grade. I just would say that like I started to notice it in the eighth grade. With this question, a lot of people that I interviewed were saying basically the same thing and like, they're not wrong. Like, <laughs> um, so a typical day with anxiety, it really depends on the day. Um, so a typical day with my anxiety is normally I'm fine. Um, I do have some stuff that like bothers me. So I um, pick up a lot on people's body language and um, 
if they seem off, it sets my anxiety. Like, even if I haven't been talking to them, like, did I do something wrong? Is there something that I can do to help them? Like, it sets my anxiety off on this little, like, well, clearly you did something wrong, so now you have to make up for it type of thing. You know, you're just doing your normal stuff. Some days, I don't get it. It's not, like, constant for me. But, I don't know, you just, like, a small thing happens and you have a an overreaction, like, something that's really not that big of a deal to most people, you just can't get over it. You have so much anxiety about it and can't like move past that thing. I think, you know, some days are perfectly fine, right? And depending on the level of anxiety that you have, I feel like with everything with health and mental wellness, it's a spectrum, right? So depending on, you know, what's going on in your life, it could be a perfectly normal, wonderful, and lovely day. If you're someone who has anxiety that's triggered by like certain concerns or just certain things, which like I kind of think of myself as having that, right? I have anxiety around um, like experiences or just like feeling overwhelmed. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed, the day is very difficult to get through and you really feel like you're just dealing with it. Like, okay, one minute at a time. My primary goal is to get through the next 10 minutes and then after that, I will get through the next 10 minutes. I will occasionally get feelings of paranoia and that sometimes comes with anxiety, but like whenever those feelings come along, like it is now like an anxiety driven day. Um, it also depends on like what I am, like what is planned for the day. Like if um, when I was in school, if um, there was like a presentation I had to do, if there was a big test I had to take, if there was an important conversation I had to have with someone that day, um, that would be a very anxiety driven day. And it would be terrible. It would be awful. Everything. <laughs> like legitimately everything. <laughs> um, there's not much that doesn't. Is there anything like really big in specific? Yeah, but it makes me so anxious I won't say it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. That's okay. Big causes of my anxiety is probably like problems with my friends or my parents. Social interaction, um, being on camera, <laughs> um, meeting new people sometimes, especially if they have a total different personality than me. Like if they're super friendly and bubbly, it makes me kind of anxious because I want to be like them and then I'm like, maybe I'm too nervous to like be around them. Friends, family, school, chemistry. <laughs> it's probably in two different categories, right? I get really anxious about like bad things happening to the people that I care about, right? So if I'm worried about someone who's like traveling or if I'm worried about someone like a close friend or acquaintance of mine who's just going through a hard time, like that makes me anxious for them. And also I get anxiety like really easily just from feeling like overwhelmed or unprepared for things. Like if I don't feel like I'm ready for like the day or for something like a project or something I'm trying to do, that just like sends me spiraling <laughs> into nerves. <laughs> Some things that cause my anxiety, um, I am very sensitive to sound. I with my ears, some doctor told me I had hyperacusis, which is a, a fancy way of saying like I'm sensitive to sound, but um, I can't hear certain decibels or I can't interpret them correctly. So what happens when I hear loud noises is that like it'll vibrate my ears in a way that causes me discomfort. Um, it's not painful at all. It isn't, it's just really annoying, <laughs> but um, Whenever my ears vibrate, that sounds weird, <laughs> but like that's when I'm hearing loud sounds. It makes me nervous because I do not like loud sounds. Um, I don't like yelling. I don't like when, like even if someone like drops something, like that makes me nervous, I don't like it. I say this a lot, but like it, it's obvious, like I'm no longer in school, but a lot of different aspects of school, like this, the environment of school causes a lot of my anxiety. Like for example, I don't like to walk in the hallways by myself. I usually need someone to walk in the hallways with me. If I'm going to go do something, I would like someone to be with me. 
nine times out of 10, you're always going to see me with someone in the hallway because I am too nervous to walk by myself. I don't really talk about that one because like it makes me feel really embarrassed that that happens. Oh my God, yeah, the lunchroom. Mm. I hate the lunchroom so much. It's not because like the lunch ladies are mean or the food is bad. The lunch ladies are the nicest women I've ever met and the food is really good. It's just like the environment of the lunchroom is very anxiety inducing. Um, Cause there's like the thought process of who am I gonna sit with? Where's the table? What if I don't get a table? Um, what if I'm late to the to the sub line? I'm gonna have to wait and, and you know, 90% of my lunch is now like out the window because I'm waiting in line for a sub. Um, what if I don't like the food today? What am I gonna eat? What if I want something from the snack line? I'm gonna have to wait like 30 years. And it's, it's like the whole um, idea of just being in a lunchroom makes me very anxious. I hate the lunchroom. I hate the lunchroom. I hate it so much. <laughs> Um, sometimes I just ignore it <laughs> and power through it, but I try things like meditation or just stopping and like taking some deep breaths or talking out the reasons why I am feeling anxious about something and that's actually really helpful. Like to sit down and say like this is what's making me feel anxious right now. I actually find very like cathartic or therapeutic to like name it and then be like okay like now I've said it and I can just move on. I like blare music as loud as I possibly can in my headphones and just stare at the ceiling if I'm by myself. Mine is a person, so like mine I do like a separation type of thing and so her name's Annie, which is short for anxiety. And I uh, I don't call her nice things um, to kind of get her to go away. <laughs> um, but it's more of this personified other person that's in my brain, it's not me. That's how I kind of cope with it. It's pretty hard for me to calm myself down my anxiety. It also manifests not just in like physical pain, but also I get aggressive and like very rude. And so whenever I have like an intense feeling of like anxiety, I like literally my brain like shuts down my body and I'm kind of like, I kind of push everything out. So I kind of just have to like stand there and exist for a second and like turn off my like ears and eyes and everything and like ground myself. I tend to, I like to talk to people about it or I like to sit down and journal. I write a lot about it because I think that that helps to just get it out. Like even if it's not talking, it's somewhere else, it's removed from you. There are a couple different ways that I usually try to calm down or cope with my anxiety when I'm feeling it. One of the main ways is I regulate my breathing because sometimes when I get anxious, I will start to hyperventilate and that's bad. <laughs> so I will usually, you know, breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth. I will try to ground myself. I will try to calm myself down. I am a very touchy person and a lot of my friends know this. Like I, I love hugs, I hold hands, I will lean on you, I will cuddle, all of that stuff. I love it. Human interactions, please. Um, <laughs> but that usually helps when I'm anxious, like to hold someone's hand or to, you know, hug someone or to just like lean on someone or have someone with me. Like that usually helps me out when I'm anxious. So what are some ways you can help people who are experiencing anxiety or who are feeling anxious? Um, before I get into this, I want to discuss some misconceptions about anxiety. One of the main ones is that people think that we are overreacting, which we are not. Um, the thing about mental illnesses is that these are things in your brain that induce feelings that you cannot control. That's something that they need to understand. This is not something we can control. We cannot control our nervousness right now. We can calm ourselves down and, and try to get to a, a better mental place, but it's never going to fully, you know, get rid of our anxiety. When people are looking at someone who's anxious, they will say things like, stop being nervous, like stop being anxious. You shouldn't be nervous about this. Like this is dumb. Like you're nervous about 
um, going up to the checkout. Seriously, like you shouldn't, like no, you cannot do that. Like that is not nice. Final summation of that little thing. Keep in mind that we're, we're trying our best. We really are. Um, it's just sometimes it's not as easy as you think it is to just stop feeling nervous. An easy way to help those who are experiencing anxiety is to notice the signs. Um, signs of anxiety are things like um, getting red in the face, shaking, trembling, excessive worrying, maybe a lack of sleep. What I would notice with a student um, who might be feeling anxiety uh, is if they're reaching out to me with lots of different questions. Um, you know, if they're coming back to me over and over and over again repeatedly with um, not the same question over and over again, but like a progression of questions. They might, um, and that might be an indicator to me that they're feeling anxious about something going on. Mainly their breathing and how like they act differently from their normal posture. So like when people, when I've seen people have like anxiety attacks, for example, when it's just like a mild attack, I've noticed that their breathing changes a lot and they start shaking. So it's really them like acting abnormally to what is considered normal for them. Um, and for me, it's the sort of the first the first tip off is the drop in performance. Um, students that are working hard, that are generally doing well, that want to learn and want to do well, suddenly not being able to. Um, <clears throat> that's sort of the first the first tip for me. That that wall goes up. That they feel like they can't get started because they're worried that it's not going to be perfect at the end. That's sort of the most common one I see. And one of the things like you know. Time, time goes by, right? Time ticks at the same rate that it always goes by. Um, I'm not smart enough to understand relativity. So uh, in my mind, time goes by at the same rate. And usually um, what, in my experience, what most, you know, most of the time that I've dealt with, you know, anxiety or anxiousness of myself um, or that I've seen in, in students and family members, it's usually because there's something looming in time and you just have to like get to that point and then it's okay like you realize it's going to be fine so some signs of anxiety are either really easy to notice or really hard to notice sometimes with anxiety a lot of people are really used to covering it up and it's hard to notice when someone's experiencing anxiety when they do things like that there are times where we will feel anxious, but there are also times where we do, where we feel anxious, but we don't need to talk about it. It's just like something that we need to deal with in the moment and then move on. But I believe the easiest way to notice it is basically to look out for, you know, basic nervousness. Like if your friend looks unbelievably nervous, that might be a good time to pull them aside and maybe have a conversation with them if they're ready. Some things that I do when I'm anxious are, um, like I will be holding my heart. <laughs> like I will be checking my heart rate. I will usually, like, I don't know if you can see this. I can't really, I'm looking at a camera, so I can't really tell. But like, I will, you know, put my hand to my heart and check my heart rate. I will do that. Um, another thing is like, I will shake, like my hands will shake. Um, oh, I get really hot in the face. So usually I will be doing, like if you see me doing things like this, like touching my face, I'm checking to see if my face is hot and if it is still hot. So if you have picked up on the signs that a friend of yours is feeling anxious, um, probably the next step that you should take that I um, suggest that you should take is to open up a conversation, encourage a conversation with them. Pull them aside out of the situation that is making them feel anxious and help them to openly express their feelings. You can start off the conversation by saying, is everything all right? Are you okay? How can I help you? It's, it's encouraging phrases like that that help us with anxiety open up. Something that's really important for people with anxiety to hear is the phrase that kind of goes along the lines of what you are feeling is not dumb, stupid, silly. Validate the feelings that they are experiencing because they are real. They are really experiencing this fear, this worry inside of themselves. Sometimes you will get to a point in the conversation, either in the beginning or you'll get stuck somewhere where 
your friend does not want to talk about it. That's okay. That is all right. Sometimes when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling my anxiety, I don't want to talk about it. And I will have like those good friends in my life who will pull me aside and ask if they, if, if I could talk to them about it. But like, there are times where I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> um, when it gets to that point, that's okay. It is totally okay. Yes, your friend is feeling anxious. And yes, it probably will be more beneficial to them to speak about it openly, but do not force this conversation. What's important is that you open up this conversation with them to make sure that they are um, feeling safe, that they have um, an outlet, that you are available for them. That is something that people with mental illnesses need to hear, that they have someone who they could go to to talk about these problems with. Something I would like to stress about having these conversations, these um, open, honest mental health conversations with people, if you are, you know, in this situation, seeing someone with anxiety not having a good time and you're going to go help them, I would suggest that you take a moment to check in on your own mental health because it is never helpful going into a mental health conversation with someone else when you are not doing well with your own. Whenever I go into mental health conversations with people, I take a moment to make sure that like, have I got my problems sorted out before I help someone with their problems. For me personally, before I even, like a friend even begins a mental health conversation with me, like if they want to know about my own or I feel comfortable enough to talk to them about my mental health problems, I take a moment and you know, I, I address them like, hey, is it okay if I talk about my mental health for a second? Or are you in a mentally good place for me to be able to talk to this, talk about this with you? Um, I feel like that's very important that people should do <laughs> because sometimes like if you're gonna if you're one of those people with anxiety where you're comfortable enough to go up to someone and and talk it through with someone because you trust them like this is someone that you're able to express these feelings to about it's important to take a moment to maybe you know consider their side i do this a lot because i went through a long time in my life where I would let a lot of people talk mental health with me when I wasn't even working on my own. That's not helpful because it feels as though now you have the burden of your own mental health um, problems as well as someone else's. And that's not a good spot to be in. A lot of people who experience anxiety will unfortunately go through anxiety attacks. And this is when um, their anxiety builds up so much that it's all of a sudden uncontrollable. Um, they are unbelievably nervous, unbelievably worried. There is nothing they can do. They're shaking. They're, they're like so in fear of whatever the problem might be that they cannot control it anymore. Um, those are very tough things to go through. It's a very tough thing to witness. Like I have had friends who have gone through anxiety attacks and that is very difficult. So when your friend is experiencing an anxiety attack, um, the way I, sh I would suggest to approach it is probably the same way you would approach any other time they're feeling anxious. It's just this is a more um, crisis-oriented experience. <laughs> um, because like this is a point where their anxiety has, has peaked, like they're at a very high level of anxiety. It's essentially the same process. You are opening up that conversation, saying things like, is everything okay? Are you all right? Would you like to talk about it? How can I help? Sometimes when they're experiencing when they're experiencing an anxiety attack, they will, you know, have be like, "Okay, well, I'm feeling anxious because of this and I need to get away from that." Then yeah, there you go. There's your solution right there. But sometimes when people are experiencing anxiety attacks, like this happens with me sometimes, we don't, we either don't know how you can help or we don't know what to do. And especially we don't know what you should do. And you will get to a point where they'll just be like, I don't know. 
don't feel discouraged when that happens. Like when I'm going through anxiety attacks, like I'm just so, oh my God, like I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm over stimulated. Like so many things are happening at once that like I don't know how to control it. I don't know how to work through it. And what helps is when someone um, is there and they're like, okay, well, what can I do? Sometimes when you're like, this is, it's kind of difficult talking about this because sometimes when you know, your friend is experiencing an anxiety attack, they won't know what they want you to do. Like, they'll be so nervous and you'll be like, okay, you'll ask like, what, what should, what would you like me to do? And they'll be like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. That can be a really hard place to be in because like, you know that you should be there for them, but you don't know what you should do for them. So what do I do now? When I'm in that situation, usually what I would do is that I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to help you through this. And we're gonna, we're gonna wait it out. We're gonna wait out this attack. We're gonna see what we can do. I will be with you until you know what you wanna do. I will be with you until you feel better. It's just one of those things that you, it, it's, it's, it's like a, a hands-on experience. So usually when like I'm trying to help people, like it's generalized things such as like, hey, like let, let's stop, let's talk, let's breathe, rather than like trying to find the root of the problem, which is like probably a bad thing on me. But at the same time, like I know like some people have boundaries that they don't want, like a stranger, for example, to cross. As a teacher, I often try to talk with students, and I, I sometimes do this as a whole class, right? I try to. Um, I try to, <laughs> I try to be real with them. So when I was a young teacher, like a, you know, right out of college teacher, I was like, I'm gonna be real with these kids, man. I'm gonna be like their older brother. I'm gonna tell them how it is, right? And then over time, I've sort of evolved into like dad teacher. Like all I really care about is that you're okay, right? Because in the end, like that's the stuff that matters. Like you're, you're gonna be okay. Teaching only electives helps <laughs> because that means I can remind them that is only an elective and um, again w in the recognition that like me saying it and reminding them is going to help the academic side where they their conscious brain realizes it I think the ways people around me can help when I'm anxious is to just, like I don't find it helpful when people are like, oh, just don't worry about it. And you're like, well, that's not like useful advice. Like if I were capable of just not worrying about it, I wouldn't be in this situation. So I think just having people around me like affirming and recognizing the fact that I am experiencing anxiety and just responding to like my concerns or the things that trigger my anxiety in like an affirming way. Being like, yeah, that like, that really sucks, like that's hard. Like I understand why you would feel like that. Don't tell someone to calm down because it just stresses them out and makes them feel like even worse than they actually feel. And it makes them feel really unnormal, I guess. I Trying to just be there and not try and tell you how to deal with it. I mean, telling someone to just like take a deep breath, like that's, good because I forget to do that a lot but just don't make somebody feel bad about it. Just kind of being there and talking for me it's just distraction like I said again if you talk to me about anything else and I'll be perfectly happy just get my mind away from whatever I'm thinking about and I you just slowly lose it I guess. Like everyone's very specific on how they need to be calmed down stuff I mean obviously I have other like slight coping mechanisms like if I like listen to music really loudly that helps <laughs> um, but it's other people's views of what is going to help me it, it depends on the day really and it depends on the level of anxiety I'm feeling and I you know no one knows you better than you know yourself so like personally sometimes I just really need to be left alone <laughs> like just that's it a touch on the shoulder, like helping me out of that situation, like if I'm having an anxiety attack, like helping me get somewhere that's not as public, somewhere I can just like go and deal with it and just try to calm down. Um, really it's just like little simple things like that, just, just trying to help me get out of the situation that is making me anxious. I think that if I do finally, I'm like, okay, like I'm really anxious right now. What helps is people just being like, okay, like, do you want to talk about it? And if I do, then I will talk to them about it. And if I don't want to talk about it, then I don't care. 
because there's usually nothing that they can do to actually help with the situation because it's all stuff going on in like my isolated life, not like a group thing or something. It's just something that I have to deal with. So maybe just not adding stuff to the stress. Some people don't like that. Some people just want to be alone because it'll stress them out being with other people. But for me specifically, I think having someone who's understanding and like caring and will be there for you and like, Make sure you're okay is a big thing. So that's about it. Um, that's all I have for this anxiety episode. I hope that this helped you. Um, if you found this video to be helpful, please um, share it with a friend, um, share it with loved ones, make sure that people are, um, you know, getting the ability to understand what anxiety actually is and how it affects people. Um, so the next episode after this is going to be on depression, which will be a very um, interesting episode. And um, that's about it. Thank you for watching.